My name is Ashwin Chaco, and this is the business of illustration. Roll it. Welcome back to the business of illustration. Today we're tackling the also oh controversial topic of agents. This is a question I constantly get asked. How do you get an agent? I think every illustrator asks this in their career at least once. And so today we're gonna tackle that topic and who better to tackle that topic with than an agent to give us the inside scoop on the agent world. So today I'd like to welcome James Hugh, AKA the Illustrator's Guide. So hey James, welcome to the business of illustration. So glad you uh, took the time to join me for this conversation. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, I really like what you're doing online. Thank you. Just uh, for our audience that might not know you, do you mind just doing your introduction? Sure, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm James. I'm an illustration agent at Folio Art. And more recently, I've been sharing videos online uh, about the business of illustration through my channel, The Illustrator's Guide. And... Uh, yeah, that's, that's me, really. You know, not everybody wants an agent. Not everybody needs one. And not everybody wants to pay for one. Yeah. Um, but I think at the core of it, you're paying for a service as an illustrator. And that service from an agent is uh, help with the sort of the non-creative parts of the job. And also introduction to it in a lot of cases, bigger and better clients and, uh, you know, just a bigger network of possible projects. So there are, there are loads of illustrators, I'm sure you know some, that don't have agents and just get along absolutely fine. Um, but you probably also know some illustrators who are perhaps more introverted who, who maybe don't enjoy interacting with clients directly as much or maybe they aren't as confident in promoting themselves well that's where an agent can come in really handy because they can do that for you you know if it was if it was me promoting my own work I would feel all, all kinds of you know uh, f fear of doing that but yeah. when it's when it's a, another artist's work and I can see how good it is, you know, I have no problem selling that work. I think it's it's so easy for illustrators to get in this mindset that as soon as they leave college, I have to get an agent. This is the end all, be all, you know? And if I don't have an agent, then I don't have a career. And- It seems like the next logical step. Yeah. If you get an agent too soon, yeah. you miss out on a lot of opportunities to learn. Sure. You don't learn about what it is to find your own clients, run your own business without somebody helping you. Yeah. Uh, so, for me, if I was doing it, you know, I'd want to learn all that myself so I know that I can function whatever happens you know i can do it myself yeah and then like it's like i said before you you're joining an agency as a partner i think it's a, a very rare case when a new graduate can can get an agent straight out of university mm -hmm. it, does, it does happen but usually during the summer when people are graduating and finishing their, their courses we'll get an influx of applications from from new grads and truth is that's a risk. That would be a, a risk for us to take on a new graduate because they're untested in the professional world. And even if their work is great, we have no idea how they will work with clients, how they'll work with deadlines. Um, so I think ideally, personally, I, I'd like to see a couple of years experience uh, of, of this artist finding their own work 
um, working with, you know, they don't have to be, you don't have to have an amazing client list to apply to an agency, but I'd want to see that that person can function professionally by themselves because then you're taking on uh, a partner, somebody that has something something good to offer. You're not taking on somebody that is going to need their hand holding throughout the whole process. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that makes sense. I mean, it is an investment. We have to never forget that this is first a business and then everything else. And as a business, both sides need to benefit from the relationship. Um, and so the question then is, what can an illustrator do to make themselves an attractive investment for an agency, even if they're early in their career? What are some hallmark steps you see that perhaps there have been one or two illustrators you have picked up early? What is it about them that you have seen that has given you the impression this is a worthy investment or a less risky one anyway? Yeah, it's a good question. And I suppose the first thing we see is the, the illustration style, right? We see the we see the skills and we see what they've got to offer creatively. Yeah. And that is that's a given. If you don't have that, then the rest of it doesn't matter. So that's your that's your introduction. You know, you, you see the work and you think, ooh, that looks great. Yeah. I guess the next thing is, you know, maybe what I was saying earlier, it's it's just seeing who that person's worked with and um, how many how many jobs they've got under their belt, because that tells me that this that the person has. Um, you know, they can find their own work. They are prof professionals. They've moved away from being students or beginners or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. And they're professionals. They're, they're doing the work. They're getting on with it. And as you were saying before, when, when they reach that point where they've got too much work coming in or they want to, they're ready to kind of move up into a different league, let's say, you know, get get bigger, better clients and, you know, more interesting projects. That's, you can kind of tell when uh, when somebody's at that stage, I think. I think there's a perception with illustrators that agents are the gatekeepers and they're, and they're you know, they're on a, on a different level somehow and they're kind of scared of approaching them and talking to them. Yeah. But, uh, it's just it's just not it's just not the case you know <laughs> we're we're all the same we're all in the same industry you know i'm i'm a bit older than illustration graduates but uh i'm, I'm basically the same person you know and i like illustration that's an yeah. important, important thing to mention i think it can feel like that though sometimes because they feel hard to approach that and often it's branded that way as well more for the benefit of the client not necessarily for the illustrator uh, that it feels like you're sort of approaching this faceless corporation that you're hoping will then put you at a different place in your career and that fear also then probably doesn't do much in in your favor as to how you converse with the agent and all that yeah some of the agencies kind of seem more friendly and approachable than others don't they yeah yeah definitely that def that that's gonna help um yeah but that's just down to the personalities of the of the people that work there you know uh, yeah our, our team well I won't speak for everyone, but I'm quite introverted, you know, so sure. I, don't get, I don't get out there much and I'm not like <laughs> heading down the illustration meetups and things like that. So I guess it does put a bit of a, a barrier between between us. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I, I'm curious about agents and how they get you work. 
what what is the process what is the behind the curtains process there yeah well I, I mentioned earlier that agencies like to work with artists who have a unique style yeah so for, for the for the artists who do and have got their own kind of brand I suppose often clients will get in touch specifically to work with those people you know for the for the really uh, established ones sometimes clients will be writing briefs specifically for those artists yeah um, other than that a client might get in touch with a brief and say who do you have that could work on, on this and we can send back some recommendations and uh, I guess the other I think there's only really only three ways that, that we do it and the third way being we approach clients go, go to meetings pitch work um, I guess that also includes book fairs as well I, I've never been to a book fair um, too many people for my liking but my, but my, my colleagues go and um, uh, pitch books and uh, that kind of thing um, yeah so yeah, I, I guess for an established agency like Folio, yeah, we're in a lucky position that clients come to us. We've got a great selection of artists. For a newer agency, they'll probably have to do a lot more going out, f finding the clients. And marketing. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm curious within that... Um... Does having an agent necessarily guarantee that an illustrator is going to get work from the agent? How much of their own promotion should an illustrator be investing, even if they are signed up with an agency? No, it definitely doesn't guarantee it. Yeah. Um, and it can be quite difficult sometimes as an agent because when when you when you work with an artist who's not had a job in a while you know you can start to feel really guilty about that and, and you can do your best yeah. um, but the th it works better when you work as a team because you both have the same goal yeah. so if the artist is doing their own marketing and, and uh, outreach and the agency is doing it too that's operating at 100% efficiency if you want to think about it like that now if, if the agent is the only uh, party that's, that's that's doing that then you're missing you're missing something you know it's not operating as well as it could be and and how much do you think does social media play a role within this um, promotion uh, and even to being picked up by an agency, does having a following help in uh, your choose or choice process when picking up illustrators? Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not a massive fan of social media. Yeah. I try and look at it as little as possible. Sure. With very, uh, you know, varying levels of success. Um, but if I'm being really honest with myself, if I look at an artist's work, if I see their website, I will look at their Instagram. Yeah. Do I pay attention to the following? I think in a very general way, if they have a high following, let's say mid four figures, I'd yeah. say, okay, they're, they've been consistent. They've, they, they put out good work people like what they're doing um, if it's in the hundreds you know maybe you think well maybe this person hasn't quite found their stride yet I mean this is a te terrible way to measure um, someone's creative work I know sure. that yeah. um, but you can't help reading into it I guess yeah. but then again you know the difference between 5,000 uh, 5, followers and 25,000 followers. I don't know that that has 
as much of a, an impact on me, really. If you can get 5,000, you can get 25,000. It's just about how long you've been doing it and how much effort you put into it. And, and actually, you know, if you put in too much effort into your social media, maybe you're not putting enough effort into your commercial projects. There's only so much time in a day, really. Yeah, yeah. I think it's finding that healthy balance. On the other side of things, the more technical side of things, mm -hmm. can we talk about contracts and getting paid by agents? How does that all work? Just for anybody who is unaware of that. Yeah. Um, I only have the point of view of my experience, which is yeah. limited to one agency I've been with for eight years and a couple of internships I did before that, which I never really got close to any contracts or anything there. Um, but from what I understand, around 30% commission uh, is fairly standard, in the UK at least. Yeah. Um, contracts, I believe, should be there as to protect both parties yeah. equally. You know, it's simply just covering each other's backs. They should be fair, mutual um, contracts and no, nothing, no nasty surprises in there. Yeah. I have heard uh, that some agencies, specifically American agencies, will charge for a lot of different extras. So, yeah. if you want to be in uh, now, we we do some we do some marketing uh, marketing things throughout the year, and we encourage artists to participate in that. It does sometimes require um, a financial investment, but that's what it is. It's an investment, and yeah. we pay some, and they pay some relative to. Um, well, yeah, you know, we, we split the cost. Um, sure. And I've heard of some agencies where they'll charge you for charge you for that, but you have to do it. Yeah. So it's, it's not a choice. Yeah. They'll also charge you for... Uh, e even to the point that they will charge you to appear on their website, which seems wow. crazy. Yeah. So you're basically be, you're basically paying to be represented. Sure. And I think if you have to pay anything up front to join an agency, uh, that's probably not. They probably don't really believe in you. They they want to make money from you. It's a bit but, of a red flag to me. Definitely. Yeah. I I think that 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 it is crucial, regardless of who the agency is well-known, unknown, that when an illustrator approaches the agency and gets the contract, that they read through it well, if they don't find somebody who understands it. Because with any business, they have to, the prerogative is to protect themselves first, even if it is a conducive relationship. And this is true in any business, not just in the illustration world. And so I think it's always important to look out for those little clauses that might not intentionally mean to box you, the illustrator, in, but does. And so it's important to get those taken out or at least looked over and discussed to see um, why they're there and what can be done to ensure that you have the most freedom with your work, with your copyright, with licensing and everything else that happens. Yeah. Even if that relationship were to end, how that contract plays out if things close down. Because there are some clauses within contracts when you leave an agency about getting paid even after you've left. And so reading those is also super important. Agents. Part of an agent's job is to negotiate. Yeah. So... Everything's negotiable, <laughs> I think. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh, to to an extent. Yeah. You know, if you read through the contract and there's some things that you think 
I'm not so sure about that. You know, you can just have a conversation about it. it doesn't have to be. A, it certainly, doesn't have to be a confrontation. Sure. Yeah. Everything. Everything should be open to discussion. Yeah. Now there will be some uh, hard lines on on either side where sure. you think mm, we can't really bend on that, but maybe we could bend on this. You know. It's, yeah. I think a, a, any good agent will would respect you for bringing it up. And some people. Are, Approach those conversations in a way that is all or nothing, win yeah. or win lose. Sure. When really, that's rarely the case, you know. It's, uh, yeah. There's usually a win win in there somewhere. And if there isn't, no, no need to uh, no need to fall out about it, right? Yeah. Or or they're just not the right agency for you. Yeah. And there's probably somebody else who is willing to make those compromises yeah. and and will in the the long run be a more successful relationship versus a contentious one which then continues throughout you know uh the whole time you're you're in that contract yeah that's a very good point about um not being the right agency not every artist is right for every agency and not every agency is right for every artist there are so many so many variables you know it's the work the style of the artist's work the net the particular network of clients that the, that the agency has even the personalities of the of the uh, two parties and i've been in a situation before where i've worked with really there's one in particular I think of quite often um, who was such a skilled illustrator and he joined us on a kind of a trial period for I can't remember how long maybe six months maybe a bit longer and we just couldn't get just couldn't get like a regular flow of work and it was a real it was a real shame and we kind of parted ways on good terms um, and he ended up with another agency and from what I can tell he's just thriving you know? mm. so there's really no harm in uh, you know I, I'm not suggesting chopping and changing agencies every couple of years is a good idea because you don't get time to build up relationships but yeah. throughout the course of a career you know you might work with Lots of different agents. And you, you know, it might take you a while before you find the one where things really click. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's a, a good place to close our conversation on uh, agencies. Uh, if you guys have found this helpful, I want you guys to know that James's new book is coming out, The Illustrator's Guide. Um, yeah, copyright. that's a copy right there. I'm looking forward to getting my copy. Uh, from what I've read so far, it is really detailed and very great for anybody looking for practical steps in the illustration world. So do check it out. Uh, thank you all for listening. As always, be true, be you, stay fruitful. <laughs>